was realizing that as important as finance is, we had really been rooted in a lot of practices that were somewhere between 30 and 100 years old and tech right. can help. You know that you and I worked together at Coinbase. I, when I was at Coinbase, you were at Circle. We put yeah. together one of the most important stablecoin projects in the world. Well, uh, you know, I, Jeremy, I think there are a lot of ways uh, of thinking about stable coins. There's sort of a short term, a medium term and a long term way of, of thinking about how they can improve our, our uh, sort of system. But what I think about it in the first instance is it's an issue of competitiveness. So, so, you know, when I talk about stable coins, what I sort of say is the dollar has been the reserve currency for a long period of time, not because it's necessarily better um, or easier to use or, or anything. It, it's, it's the most liquid cur currency because of a set of historical anomalies that happened sometime between the end of World War II and the mid 50s. Right. And the world we live in isn't that world anymore. So the dollar is still the reserve currency, but only because we're still running on that history. Yeah. The problem is the history is not likely to preserve our role as the reserve currency forever. And you see this in the fact that global central banks have been reducing their dollar holdings and diversifying away from the dollar yeah. every quarter going back now four, five, six years. Uh, this seems to be an inevitable trend. We're still the most important, but we're way yeah. less the most yeah. important than we used to be. Right. And in a world of competition, my view is that the dollar needs to transact more uh, attractively than others, right? So if, if we're no more liquid than the renminbi or the euro or something at some point in the future, we could still be the currency of choice if the transactional mechanism for dollars is superior to the transactional right. mechanism of other kinds of things. And so I think it's that suite of issues that stable coins and blockchain can ultimately um, uh, yeah. help us with, is to preserve the yeah. role of the dollar in the system. Welcome to the Crypto Teacher. And guys, please like and subscribe. If you do like what you're listening to, please inform your friends and family and spread it all over social media. It is imperative that we get back to learning finances and understand how the world really works. Because once we understand how the world really works, we understand that everything is planned out. Now, I want to thank those who purchased the books, Crypto Teacher and W.O. Book. Also, those who donate to the Cash Out Patreon, much love. And then also those who purchased at the store, much love. Keep blowing the store up. Thanks a lot, guys. Much love to you. Now, guys, of course, we're going to get into Bitcoin and cryptos first. Now, Bitcoin is still settled down. Now, guys, what happened that you notice if you're paying attention to the key indicators? What do I teach you? Stay focused on the key indicators. Tether gets another billion dollars, guys. That means that we're going to pump again. But I'm going to go over that and let you know why we're going to drop right back down. Now, guys, make sure you keep an eye on XRP. Remember, XRP is a synthetic stable coin that allows us to know which way we're going. So the stable coins and XRP is so, so important. And then also the OMG network, but we're still studying that because it just happened. But the fact is that basically Teller got another billion dollars last night. So we know that we're going to come up. But the fact is that the open interest for Bitcoin futures drop 653 million dollars now of course that can change as the days go on but the open interest dropped almost a half a billion dollars remember before they said they were breaking records breaking records that's why we took this low now so the fact is guys we will pump but we're going to come right back down and don't forget we got back too so we'll probably stay in between that 10 and 11 range for this whole time about 10 5 to 11 5. But the fact is, guys, we are going to get that pump, but then we're going to come right back down because if that interest is not there for the futures, then we're not going to get that serious pump. I just want to make sure that we understand that. Now, basically, getting into the video with Brian Brooks. Remember Brian Brooks? Remember I played this video, did this video probably uh, last month. But he stated that, yeah, we were working with Goldman Sachs. He was at Coinbase. Working on the global stable coin, guys. Remember, he said that the world stable coin, global stable coin, whatever he said. But the fact is, is that they unveiled a new tech feature that allows businesses to pay sellers in their current fiat, but then also they can choose to take the USDC. So they have the two options. We know eventually they're just going to be able to just take the, the stable coin, but the fact is that right now they can pay with their own currency through that new integration. And guys, that's in 80 countries. 80 countries, guys. So definitely in U.S. I'm telling you guys, that's why you have to keep an eye on things that stay silent and stay in the back. 
And remember, USDC has been doubling their market cap constantly. So make sure that we're keeping an eye on that. Now, we know we have Binance. I went over this the other day. Launched a centralized automated maker pool for liquidity providers. So DeFi, decentralized, what Binance do come and do? Centralized. But we know that Binance is nothing controlled by China. Nothing but a big bank. And then basically, lastly, guys, make sure you keep an eye on this. Is that uh, the fact is that Sushi Swap gets the approval to move that 180 million from Uniswap. So guys, make sure you're taking advantage of Sushi Swap. If you're my Patreon, I advise you of this before already. But the fact is, make sure you're taking uh, advantage of that. And guys, make sure you're staying focused on the key indicators. Volume, make sure you're looking at XRP and XRP's volume. And then also the all the stable coins. And I'm going to do a video on PAX soon. But guys, we have to make sure we're staying focused on the indicators. Like I said, we're going to pump. And then we're going to settle back down. The reason why is, like I said, because of the open interest. But guys, that's all I have for you. Don't forget about the books, Crypto Teacher NWO book, your cryptos, Coinbase, Bitchu, Binance, and then also uh, your stocks. You have Kobo, Chip Stocks, Gaming, Banking Stocks, also at Home Stocks, guys. Make sure you're staying focused on those. And then also the C word, make sure you're staying focused, focused on the, the biotech stocks. And then also, because everybody's sitting at home getting free money or waiting on that extra free money. What are they doing? Drinking and smoking weed. Don't forget about those stocks. And then also, guys, when I start my stock channel up, basically I'm going to explain to you calls and shorts. So therefore, you don't care whether the market goes up or down. You can take advantage of it. So the fact is that right now the market went down a couple of days. You still make money because people are shorting. And the same way if it goes up, you know, you put calls in. But the fact is that you don't have to buy a whole share. That's the smart, that's just a smart thing to do. Majority of people that's in, you know, buying stocks, they buy the whole stock. You don't have to do that. Just buying contracts at, you know, a quarter of the price. And of course, when these uh, big corporations, I'm, as I said, I'm going to go over all this on the stock, stock market. But the fact is, these big corporations, when they're shorting stocks, they're not paying full price for the stocks. They're paying 50 cents. So it's, it's definitely a game there, guys. But y'all have a wonderful day. Of course, I come back with that second video just to make you think. Probably do something more motivational this time. Y'all have a wonderful day. Why can't you rely on technical analysis and charts alone to have results on the market? I think you can't have, not because there's anything wrong with charts and fundamentals. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're going to trade or buy equities or trade indices or gold or, you know, Forex or anything for that matter, it's the intelligent thing to do. I should look at charts and I should look at fundamentals. The problem you have there, which I discovered very early in my trading, is that everybody else is looking at the same charts and the same fundamentals. And the market is looking at the same charts and the fundamentals. The market knows you as a retail trader is looking at that chart and you're going to buy at a certain level and you're going to sell at a certain level. They know, they predict what you're going to do, so they do the opposite because if they don't, they're not going to take your money. So you're bound to lose if you're just relying on technical analysis and fundamentals because they know exactly what chart you're looking at. The millions of people look at the same chart. Oh, I've looked at the charts. I know where it's going to be a sell and a buy. No, because they know that. They see the same chart. <laughs> They're not going to give it to you. If they give it to you, if they let you buy it at that level, then they're not going to take your money. They are there to take your money. So are the markets rigged? 100% they're rigged. But thank God they're rigged. I am happy they are rigged. I'm happy the stock markets are rigged. So how do we use this to our advantage? Okay. First of all, I am absolutely over the moon that stock markets are rigged. Since I found it's rigged and fixed, I said, thank God they are fixed and rigged. 
And people still don't believe they are rigged. People say, oh, demand and supply, oh, price of dollar, price of this, gold has gone up, and all of them come out wrong because they're rigged. So it, it, they don't move to any kind of logical uh, pattern most of the time. And imagine if the markets, imagine if the US markets were not rigged, they were not fixed every day then you would have all kinds of rumors, you would have certain parties influencing it, taking it up and down. You would never make money. It would be such a mess. It, it, it's such a, such a chaos. How could you possibly make money? It would be like uh, trading some stocks, which some news comes from here and there. But when you're rigged, when they're rigged, when I know, okay, today they're gonna, from here to New Year, they're going to take dozens from 18 to 19,000 plus and then 20,000. So I know that's their plan. So I can predict that, so I can bet on that, because it's rigged, yes? If it was left to like supply and demand and this trader buying that or that rumor coming from there, it would go up and down and go nowhere and nobody would make money. It wouldn't be a market worth uh, trading on. And I would say try to figure out the macro geopolitical agendas and the psychology of the market rather than a technical and fundamental analysis.